record. Okay, so we're recording with with it. We're finally going to lock this in. <laughs> okay, I thought I would do a video with uh, with you, Gilbert, just as a a memento or a memory of our moments together. And um, I know for me, you're like a I, I could say you're like a mentor. I, I can say that. <laughs> yeah, I. I I know that when I first saw you a few years ago now, and I, some of the stuff you were writing, it was like it just sort of hit home a bit. Um, not all, but a lot of it. And then uh, I was like, uh huh. And I think I read your book. What was the name of the book again? Self Aware. Yeah. And, and Self Illumination, two books. Right. Fantastic. So, um, I might even share the screen and just show the book, but I, I love the book. The book is really easy to read. And I think you've got quite a few videos that I've watched too. And I find that when I, and a lot of people, not just you, a lot of people that I kind of think, oh, you know what? I, I think my brain's a bit like that. And then I'll follow them for a bit and I'll take a little bit on. And um, and I think for me, the journey probably started about maybe 10 years ago where I was, well, I've always questioned everything, but I realized that my pain and suffering comes from myself but that back before I knew what I know now, which isn't much, <laughs> it, it was um, the blame game and the victim and the, you know, poor me and nobody cares. That's yeah. It. Yeah. So, so psychological suffering is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's it. Nobody can argue with that unless they're n mad. Who would argue with psychological suffering is unnecessary? And if you if that registers, you're like, hang on a minute, then there's a natural inquisitiveness, you know. Well, why? What does that? Why? Why am I suffering? You know, like, what's? Wouldn't it be really wise to find out if psychological suffering is unnecessary? Wouldn't that be like something really important to discover whether it's true or not? And that's it. But the, there's a willful blindness that's very um, prevalent in human beings. You know, all sorts of atrocities go on and people turn away. They don't want to look at it. You know, like you walk down the street and there's a homeless person, you know, sitting there. And there's a willful blindness. It's like, you know, you see a lot of people just completely ignore it. They don't want to face this thing because it's threatening to them. Look, what if I ended up like that? But there's, you know, the compassion is is missing because, you know, they're not going to give them the shirt off their back. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's so just... True. How do you react when you see a homeless person? Well, I don't know. I, well, it just happens spontaneously in the moment. Yeah. Sometimes I might give them something and sometimes I might talk to them and sometimes I might be busy and, and don't even give them yeah any I think it's clear, Gilbert to me I think it's like I've worked and I was working in the city as when I was doing teaching the counseling back in, in the city a couple of years ago maybe three years ago and there was this these people obviously in the city and there was one particular man, young man that was like that you just see them like that yeah. and all I wanted to do is put my arms around him and just take him home he was like my, probably my son's age and I just thought, well, yeah. the, the fear came in. It was like, what happens if he's not right mentally? What happens if he well, he, this, right? <laughs> the he probably he probably wouldn't want to go home with you anyway. So you know, it's all <laughs> it's all you. It's all your so reaction. The, I'm giving you a hypothetical. I wanted to even give him money. Then I went, and there was a million thoughts. So I just kept walking. So I think for a lot of people, it's the fear of the unknown that that stops them from actually talking. Because I mean, it could be. Look, they got themselves where they're at. No one knows the story of anyone, right? So, but the thing is, there's compassion there, but then what can you do? There's not enough done here for homelessness, I don't believe, in this country, but that's another story. Yeah, but yeah. There's, a lot of, there's a lot of assumptions in what you just said, you know, like you say they got themselves there. Well, they didn't. They didn't do anything. That's just how life has gone for them. And, you know, that applies to everyone. You well, there's know. mental um, health. What about mental health? What's your view on mental health? What's your view on addiction and all these other things that other families might think, you know what, you can leave now because we've taken all your BS and it's time for you to go out and learn. That could have been. <laughs> well, mean, it's, it's, about, it's about patterns. It's about, um, you see, the brain is a pattern recognising instrument. 
Yeah. It's it's we are recognizing patterns constantly mm. during the waking state. With the, with the brain is recognizing patterns, and um, somebody who's been labelled with mental illness is they their patterns are usually quite different um, to a sort sort of normal sort of person. Not that there's any such thing as a normal person. We all have different patterns that we respond to. Mm. And what happens is that people who have these uh, strange uh, patterns, their mental activity uh, is very difficult to relate to. So it, it brings up conflict and disease and all sorts of things. And if it's not somebody that you know or love, then you you don't want anything to do with them. But if it's somebody in your circle of family and friends and things, then it it becomes more difficult because uh, because you don't know them, Gilbert. For me, it's not about that. It's not about because they're my family. For me, this I just look and think, what? Well, you know, I take chances. I've taken a lot of risks in my life, and it's got me into a lot of trouble. So for me to act on that spontaneous giving, caring, <laughs> the nature that I have, you know, my mum's always saying, you know, you take the, you don't take the easy straight yeah. road to take the yeah, road, yeah. right? So it, 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 there's only fear or love to me. To me, there's only fear or love in the way that we allow ourselves or, or acknowledge it within ourselves to be. There's only fear or love. So it, if, the, if the thoughts in my head aren't coming from a love perspective, let's say love, united, uh, openness and it's not constricted. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, but the thing is you don't have any choice. You think you believe you have mm. a choice. Mm. But it's like, you know, this idea that the Buddhism says, you know, you have to cultivate love and compassion. Well, I mean, it's all very nice, but you can't cultivate compassion. Compassion either arises spontaneously or it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the same with love. I mean, Nobody chooses to love, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's there. It's, in fact, it's all love in a, in a way. Mm. Energy is um, light, light is love. You know, the sun shines uh, in all directions mm. uh, spontaneously and it doesn't ask for anything back. This is the nature of love. It just shines of itself and all of the trouble with human love is is a, it's a like a business transaction you know i'll love you if you love me um and then it, all the mess comes out of that i mean horrendous uh, things go on in the name of love and it's not love you know love it's nonsense to call it love and you know there are different types of so-called people there's people there's romantic people you know people who who love Rumi and they they go on about Rumi's poetry and everything. It's all love and da 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 da, you know. But that's not the way it is. It's that you know, you are you are a complex um, thing. There's lots of um, anger and um, maybe hate hatefulness going on at times. And you know, to deny that is to deny the, the reality. It's like um people you know i heard somebody say i never have any negative thoughts and i thought well you are you are absolutely deluded uh because you know you cannot do anything about you don't even know what your next thought is going to be actually a lie isn't it it is a lie yeah. but it's a, a self-delusional lie and you know in the scheme of things people lie you know they lie all the time yeah. and uh, because they don't know who they are, mm. and and you then you get these you know super duper teachers who actually think that they're helping people and and um, getting to you know whatever it is becoming enlightened or whatever. It's all nonsense. You know these people don't actually know who they are. They've got an image of themselves as being. You know, God has given them this task to save people, mm. but it's it's delu a self delusion. You, you don't have to watch them; they're completely full of vanity and conceitedness, and and it's nonsense. But people, you know, 
people love that because you know, they like, generally speaking, I'm just talking generally in society, people like confidence. And if somebody oozes with confidence, whether it's based on reality or an illusion, mm. it doesn't matter. They like to be around confident people because it makes them feel safe and they think it's going to rub off on them. Yeah. So it's imitation. You see, when we learn language, when we're very babies, we learn language, we learn through a thing called imitation. So we imitate the sounds and we get rewarded or not um, when we get the sounds right. And so we, we discover this thing called communication. But what's being communicated? You know, they say that 80% of communication is nonverbal. And if you take that, that's just a general thing. Um, if you sort of look at that, it's like it's, it becomes really interesting. You, you, when you're talking to somebody, um, there's, the, there's the verbal, but there's also all sorts of signs that are, and are signals that are being shared. Yeah. And it's like if you, you get, I get stopped in the street by um, some people who are nonstop talkers and they, you know, you can give them all sorts of signs that you, 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 can't, you haven't got time to talk, you know, and they will, they've got rhino, rhino skin. The, the skin's like a, yeah, it's all about them. It's like they've yeah. got the story to tell and you're just somebody, you know, that's there to listen and, uh, and they're amazing specimens, you know, like it, it's all about them. And if you try and change the subject uh, to something else, they will make this segue, yeah. sometimes absolutely phenomenal. They'll make this segue through the subject that you're talking about and bring it right back to them. Bang. It's all about me again. And, and character, that, right? Is it a character thing, you think? It's patterns. It's the patterns that patterns. have worked for them. You know, they, they get away with it. Yeah. But um, yeah. I'm not sure they'd have any really close friends. I don't know. That's so true. Yeah. I mean, they're very annoying. I mean, again, we can't, we're both speaking here. I mean, and I, I saw a video recently of, I can't remember her name, but when I watched it, I just had such a feeling of fan. I just felt so good. And I just went, oh my goodness. And it's the way that you articulate your words. You know, I came here an immigrant. And I don't think I can express as well as what my brain thinks out there. So sometimes when I'm writing things, I might you might understand it totally different to what I'm meaning, right? Um, so to of me, course. sometimes I might judge your some of your posts, and I'm not probably the, not the only one, and think, geez, he's always criticising other people, uh, not, not really coming across as if you're, you're criticising other people for doing what they do, but... To me, I'm thinking even the guru, right, or the idiot or the person that's watching the guru, it's all part of that pattern, isn't it? They are meant to be there in that pattern of, of sequences in life, oh. right? <laughs> and it just fits that's in like same. that. Yeah. They're not meant to be there. There's no great it's all part plan. Of it. no, it's just what is. Yeah. You know, they are there. You yeah. know, if you take a look at, take a look at sort of um, say Eckhart Tolle, he's got, so many followers, you know. Great books. I've read both. Um, Amazing books. Yeah, but that you know, the thing is that um, he, you know, when he was holding meetings, you know, they had videos of him holding meetings. And he's up the front and he's sprouting all the stuff, and you, and then they have views of all of the the people there, and they're all sort of wide eyed and you know, sort of listening to every word. Yeah, and but that's you know slavery. <laughs> Well, it's right. slave, it, the thing is, it's slavery. It's no, nobody's getting free. You know, they're not. They're not. He, it, it, maybe there's some good stuff in what he's saying, but you know, from what my observation, what happens is that that, that, that all these intricate, subtle details of the inner life and all the rest of it um, are indulged in, and people go, "Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah, that happens to me." Blah blah blah. But it's a trap. It's not freeing you. It's it's putting this. The whole thing about enlightenment is it's it's going to happen in a future time. Well, the future time never happens. Yeah. The the future never happens. It's, it's always right yeah. now. So 
this is very significant because there are messengers, you know, they don't call themselves teachers usually, but they, they share a message that's about now. Mm. It's about recognising in the deepest sense, not that there's any depth, but in the deepest sense, you know, your existence is perfect, you know, that you don't have to do yoga and punish the body yeah. and purify the body. You don't have to punish the mind and purify the mind. You know, it's all bullshit. It's it's bullshit and it's a trap. But so you say that a lot, Gilbert. Can I interrupt, intervene here just a little bit? <laughs> I just want to intervene here only because I have, I want to say something now before I forget. When you say these, then I've read your post, you're very passionate and it shows as if you're passionate, <laughs> right? No, really, it shows as if you're saying, you know, like, like even with me, when I was seeking, like, you know, I, I don't think I'm still seeking, to be quite honest with you. I don't think I am anymore. I am very mm -hmm. much on the par of let's see what happens next. I'm going to surprise myself with myself. I have no idea what's coming, literally. And I never well, claim to does. know anything because I don't. I'm only sharing yeah. like you, like everyone else is sharing. So, but, but there was a moment, and for these people that you say are entrapped, that those valuable, it could have been the 10% of whatever that person was saying, helped me a lot. And the rest was rubbish. It didn't resonate, right? And same with you, Gilbert. Every one of us had said, had, had someone pointing. You can't, we came into this world. Of course. Right. So, of course. So, but, but see, to say that someone else is wrong, is this is where I'm having trouble with, because I look at that and I go, well, if it makes you happy, it makes you happy. You're being fooled. Look at this. I had to show you. You're being fooled. <laughs> Isn't he gorgeous? Yeah. Um, you know, you're being fooled, but really there's nothing wrong. This, th that's okay. No, well, there's, <clears throat> there's nothing wrong, but psychological suffering is unnecessary. You see, that's the, you could say that's the only reason I share is that I know that, that psychological suffering is unnecessary. I don't understand and if you look at but if you, if you look take at away, like, away a baby's, if you take away a baby's uh, lollipop, there's going to be psychological suffering. A baby's going to have a fit. That's psychological suffering. So what do we do? Give them that. Give them no, that. Uh, no, right? no, no, no. A baby doesn't have any psychological suffering. The baby is. It's. It's just. It, it's. You take away the lolly from it, and and it, it wants. It wants it back. It's. They don't have a language yet. So they, they uh, psychological suffering is based on language. Mine, it's poor mine, me. Mine, this is happening to me. Mine, yeah, mine. but that's yeah, that's all right. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But there's no, there's no, the baby's not laying at, at not awake at night going, oh, I can't cope with this. They took the lolly away from me. <laughs> blah blah. It's always pick on me. Blah blah blah. You know, but that's once you, yeah. once you've got the language you yeah. can do all that stuff to yourself yeah. you beat yourself up with words yeah. and words yeah. words are just vibrations they're just patterns so you know like somebody who says oh i'll never amount to anything i'm no good you know this is a um this is a chant that people chant to themselves mm. and and that's the trap so psychologically they they're chanting i'm no good I'll never amount to anything, you know, blah, blah, blah. So then they have a bias. So they, and their perception, yeah. this, uh, uh, what do they call it? Confirmation bias. Uh, what they recognise out there is things, are uh, things and events and things that correspond with this poor me story and they ignore the good things. So they, they, they trap themselves psychologically in this, um, yeah. turmoil. Mm. So the only way out is full stop. Stop the story. Stop the narrative. So tell me how you and can stop the narrative, Gil. How do you stop? The, I mean, it's happening, right? How do you stop the narrative? Well, you just pause the thought. And do what? And just recognise the silence. There's no problem in, in, the, in the naked cognition Mm. which is the registering of impressions mm. before the so-called person or the psychology or the intellect get a hold of it and put labels on it. Yeah. So just breathing, the, staying present. Is that what you do? Like, 
so to give someone a bit <laughs> of a, an insight to <clears throat> what not to, because if you, you're telling somebody who's doing what they're doing, don't do that. It's not, you know, what happens with the brain does a thing on its own. So if you've you, got you, a brain. You, 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 have, you, you see what you're doing, you're running away with stories again. But to, 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 okay, explain to me if my, my, I'll talk about me, if my brain is overloaded with a lot of garbage and I'm aware of this. this is, you see, but this is, this is, this is nonsense. It's a story. You can't stop it. And you believe it. It's, it's not no, no, true. No, no, no. no, no it's, it's all bullshit. It's in my head. It's happening. I can't stop thoughts. I can say yeah, I recognise that, that these are fucking thoughts. You can stop thought. So tell me how to do that. If, somebody, if you're in a crowded room and they're chatting away and somebody shouts out, fire, or shut the fuck up, yeah, you know, the thought will stop. Yeah. And then there's a reassessment. Or if, if an emergency happens, you know, there are stories of emergencies happening and people find this incredible strength to yeah. do what's necessary. Like All of whatever, crap, whatever crap was going on in their head, just bang, stop. So this is very significant. Mm. I can pause my thought easily. So nothing. This, what, does it have to be? No, but what I mean is you can redirect a thought. Is that what you're saying? No, no the thoughts just appear. The they thoughts appear. have no power. They have no power. Thoughts have no power. Words have no power. Yeah. So if you pause the thought... You can recognize that there's nothing wrong. Yeah. So, you know, you might see birds in the sky and a beautiful day, you know. Yeah. It's like going to a funeral, you know, everyone's sad about somebody dying. But the overwhelming um, thing about a funeral, you know, one where they put the body down into the ground, is that, you know, there are birds flying between trees, the sun shining, you know, there's rain or whatever. Life goes on, you know. Life doesn't stop for anyone. Yeah. All of our self-importance mm. is just nonsense. So, yeah. uh, self-importance is 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 the great delu illusion um, that that leads to all sorts of other nonsense. Uh, we think we're so important, you know. The, the mother says, "Oh, you're such a beautiful baby." Blah blah. Fills the baby with all this nonsense, you know. And and turns it into a self-centered little creep, basically. Whereas if you know a sensible mother will not do that, the the sensible mother doesn't say to the child, "Say thank you to Auntie Betty, you know, for the biscuit." You know, let the child be free to be spontaneous. If it wants to say thank you, it'll say thank you. But if it, you've got this, you know, this thing over you, making you. you know, do this and do that and do so this. So many, Gilbert, so many, even people who are from a real, you know, very, very strict cultural background. I mean, the expectation is the expectation. It's been instilled in them, in all of us, really. Do you know what <laughs> well, I mean? Like common sense isn't common sense for everybody. And I always say forgive those who don't know what they do. They don't. Like my mother brought yeah, but... things up, well, I'm not going to say what, but recently and I said, Mum, she's got no idea. Why do you have to hate for What do you have to blame? She doesn't really understand that she's doing anything wrong. Yeah, so, it's all unconscious. It's it's all it's right. all just patterns, yep. patterns repeating themselves. Yep. And they you can stop those patterns. You know, you said you just said it's been instilled in you. It it has not been instilled in you. There's a surgeon can cut you open and look for it. It won't. They won't find it. It's all psychological. Yeah. It has no power. It only ha seemingly has power because it's believed to be true. But everything it's like is the guy who says, I'm no good. I'll never amount to any. What? Everything is psychological. Without word, we no, can't. No, no, no. It's not. Psychological is just thoughts, words, and yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It, you can't see it. It's, it's ephemeral. It's, 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 it's yeah. like music. You can't see music. Psychology, you can't see it. No. It's just thoughts, and thoughts have no substance or independence of their own. They're just like clouds in the sky. What do you but think about unconscious triggers? Well, even to call it, to say there's an unconscious is, is a concept. Yeah. You know, Jung, Jung introduced this unconscious thing, which in if you really understand what Jung was about, he had great insight into these 
seeming levels of of the human being and uh, in a very different way than um, Freud. Mm. Uh, Freud was, you know, had a whole different, you know, it was all about the mother and sex yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But um, Jung had, had deep insight and this, I just saw a, re a video recently of him and I was absolutely, um, uh, you know, it was, it was so really amazing thing to watch him because there's it's a video of him in person I, I'd only ever read his work before ah, so can you send it to me it's on my it's on my uh, Facebook page okay. anyway um, and as I said before you know 80% of the communication is nonverbal so he's there on the video and he's talking but you're you're seeing his face and his uh, demeanor and and you can recognise there's an understanding there, you know, a, a very deep understanding, and um, it's not nonsense. But that's your opinion, uh, though, Gilbert, right? Because that's your understanding. What? It's only your understanding. It's the same with Muji and, and so I'm not going to start naming, but people will look at it and go, well, I, I can see there's an understanding, just like you're having that experience. Many have that experience with different types of personalities, right? Yeah, but that then people have a, have these concept, concepts about what understanding is. <laughs> understanding, well, it's it's true. But it, what's understanding? You know, I understand one thing, and you understand another. Who's right in the understanding? Not, but but the understanding <laughs> is there for everyone. But they get that the thing is that the misunderstanding is more attractive. They go with misunderstanding because there's, you know, everything gets stuffed up but the simplicity of understanding is really non-conceptual awareness there's no labels you understand instantly what what something is yeah. uh, without the labels you know it's like bob says if you look around the room and people look around the room and he says well you saw everything yeah and uh, he said, now give me, a, tell me what you saw, you know, give me a list of all the things you saw. Well, you can't because you can only label certain things. But everything was seen. But everyone's so, seen different, different. What? Like what? you and I could be looking at a sunset together and you and I will see a very different picture. So that you, you can't um, hypothesise that way because every, everything is all about your mind, my mind, your mind. It's, there's no two. Whatever I'm seeing is debatable all the time. Only seen through this, <laughs> right? You can't. I can't yeah, see but, through you. Yeah, but where are you seeing from? So the the perception I'm saying. You know how you've just explained to me how Jung and what I'm saying to you. Your story and my story are just stories about perceived ideas. Still, regardless of what yeah. the content, right? So yeah. that's all I'm saying. I'm saying that the acknowledgement coming from this in every moment and whatever I'm taking in is all conceptual stuff, right? So for me to just to shut up and not blink and look at a brown wall, brown wall, brown wall, brown wall, brown wall, that's what's happening, right? That's what you talk about. But what I'm saying to you, you're deciding that Eckhart Tolle is not very great but Jung is. Do you see what I'm saying? You're having a choice. To me, it's all just the whole gibberish mess or we're all just talking gibberish mess of whatever comes out of our mouth, right? I, was, I wasn't saying that Eckhart Tolle was uh, bad or anything. It's just if you look at the, the, the situation, you've got thousands of people followers, yeah. who, are not, who are not being freed. But same with, Jung. Are, same with Jung. Yeah, that's right. Who's but you? Jung himself, you can see that Jung himself had, was free, more or less, you know. Yeah, well, um, because the, of the understanding, you know, he he, he, he was. Depressed. Who knows? Yeah, but um, anyway, so what next? <laughs> what next? Um, well, nothing next. Whatever happens next, I can't wait to see what happens next. <laughs> I'm still in okay. Okay. It's going to be a fun day because I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm enjoying it. Like, and then and try not to be. I'm hoping to take the canoe out. But this, yeah, the Zoom meeting is going to end in ten minutes. So, so the questions are, you know, the, the where am I seeing from? 
This is a really profound question. Where are you seeing from? Investigate, you know, because there are lots of assumptions. I'm a person, I'm a woman, you know, or I'm a man and I'm looking at the world, blah, blah, blah. But where is that seeing actually happening? Do you know? Well, it, I, if I say yes. Then tell me. We've no. got 10 minutes. No, no. You have to. This is the thing. It's, it's, it has to be. Nobody can do it for you. No, I can't. I have no idea. I have no idea. No, but what I'm su- suggesting is it's a very profound question. Where am I seeing from? Yeah. You, it doesn't cost anything. You don't have to join and become a... Uh, some religious nutcase or something. It's a simple question in our own language. Where am I seeing from? Investigate that and see what comes up and then see something comes up with an answer. Where And then you see it. Well, where are you seeing that from? And then another, you know, that will form into a kind of a temporary witness and then you see that. Now, where am I seeing that from? So it's like, going back and undoing the network of delusion and self, um, self-delusion. self So it's not, it, no harm can come from it. There's nothing When you say, where in, am I seeing from? When you say, where am I seeing from? Yeah. Are you, is there another way of rephrasing that? When you say, I'm acknowledging right. a thought, right? Um, where am I seeing that thought? Where is that thought coming from? Is that what you mean? Like, where am I seeing from when I'm when I'm being objective? Well, yeah, it's like a question: Who are you? You know, well, you can come up with all sorts of stories. You know, I'm uh, I'm a woman, I'm a no. man. Uh, I was born, da da da. But but who are you? You know, I have no idea. I like, actually have no idea, exactly. and I've questioned it. That's right. <laughs> I have questioned yeah, it. But, the thing is, it, okay, is seeing is happening right now? Yeah. Okay, so it's naturally, you don't, you're not doing it, it's just happening. It's like hearing is happening, you're not doing it mm-hmm. as a psychological mess. You wouldn't know how to start seeing. You open your eyes in the morning, the seeing is there. So where am I seeing from? And so if you, if you, if you just close your eyes and you look back into that space, Mm. where the head is, is there somebody there? No. Is there a top to it or a back to it or or a side to it? There's none. There's no back to it. No. That's right. So is there anyone in there? Can you see a little woman or a little man <laughs> riding a bicycle? No, it's no. emptiness. Yeah. It's absolutely empty. Emptiness looking. That's it. And this yeah. is what the Buddha discovered. Yeah. The Buddha said, form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. Mm. Or maybe he said, emptiness is form and form is emptiness. So they're not two. And psychological suffering is a, an imaginary identity called me which is just an idea. It's a bunch of memories and, and, and thoughts and feelings and all the rest of it. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fabrication and you, we need to know that because the freedom from it, you cannot transcend something unless you know exactly what it is. Mm. If, you, if you try and transcend something and you only, only know half of it, the other half will trap you. So you've got to know everything. You've got to, it's like I say, watch the mind and see how it operates, which comes from Bob Adamson. You know, that's one of the pointers in his book, What's Wrong With Right Now, if you don't think about it. Yeah. And if you watch the mind and see how it operates, it it will reveal everything. It will reveal every, all the traps that seemingly get us caught up. If you watch it without judging it as if you're watching a child or, or you're watching a yeah. uh, somebody else's mind don't yeah. don't take it personally so this is this is really significant watch your mind see how it operates and just see what happens mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. absolutely 
where we um, have most that react. Right. I, I, I'm in a position where a lot of my doings or whatever, it's actually, you know, relationships, let's not go there, it's a long subject, but I find that relationships are so tough because of that fact that you get caught in the story of what should be and what shouldn't be. And Well, there's no should. No, there's no, no, no I'm should. saying in a relationship, you know, when you have these yeah, well, expectations, I think, is where there's failing. There's a, The relationships are breaking up because nobody is actually able to harmonise together and just allow each other to be. Do you know what I mean? Especially if there's issues, yeah. if there's issues. But yeah. and another story, yeah. maybe another time. But, you know, it's been fantastic just talking about this. It's given me a very refreshing view on you and um, on your mind, <laughs> the mind of Gilbert. And hopefully one day we can catch up face to face in real life. Maybe I'll come to Sydney for a holiday. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I might just stop the recording. Yeah, it's already cut off. No.